Hi, welcome back. This is the third video talking about our resistive reactive circuits, and we're going to focus on power for this video. So in the last two videos, we solved for the inductive reactance and the impedance of the circuit. Then we went to solve for our current. Once we had our current, we took a look at our volt drops across the loads, and we added them up using an AGV chart to ensure that they equaled our source voltage. What I want to talk about in this video, though, is our power relationships. Now, we can often go right from current and impedance right into power and skip voltage altogether. Just kind of depends on what we're looking to go for. Well, with power, what I want to do is I want to put it onto a power diagram. In this case, a power triangle, right? So I'm going to use a power triangle. I know that I've got true power on the bottom. Right? And I've got quadrature power on the side, or reactive power, active and reactive. And then I also have my apparent power. So we're going to kind of talk about a couple ways to get these things. Um, what I like to do is I like to say, OK, P, I am I squared times R. Right? That's what I want to do. This is the work being done, the real power. I'm going to use my current squared times my resistance. And I have to make sure I'm using my resistance because inductive reactance doesn't give me true power. It only comes from that R or that resistance. So I get 1347 watts. Now there is a couple other ways I can get that true power. This is the one I like, I squared times R. I can go P equals I times V of the resistor. I have to use this voltage across the resistor to do that, though. I can also go P equals V squared, and that's voltage of the resistor, right? This 116.08, not the 240 volts, divided by the resistance. All right, those are two ways we can use, and these formulas will carry throughout. My Q, I'm like Q is my reactive power due to my inductance or my capacitance in the circuit. I'm going to go Q equals I squared times XL in this case. It can only come from my reactive component. It can never be R. It can never be Z. It has to be my reactive component. So I go 11.608 squared multiplied by our 18.096 ohms, and I get 2,438. Now, reactive power, remember, it is measured in volt, amp, reactive. I can use a couple other formulas if I want to, right? I could go Q equals I times V XL, the voltage across my inductor. I can use that times my current. It will work. Or I can go Q equals V XL squared divided by X. It should all work out. The one I like the most is the I squared XL because it makes sure you're using the right component. Um, then what I want to do is my apparent power. Now apparent power is volt amps. That's what they are measured in and that's what I like to think of them as. I like to take my total volts, I, oh, I guess that would be E times E. I like to take my total volts and my total current and multiply them together. I would be current, E would be voltage, same thing. I times E. In this case, I get 2786 volt amps, or close to. I could be rounding a little bit in a couple places. Another thing I like to get my S is I could also go P squared plus Q squared and do some Pythagorean's theorem. That's an excellent way to check your work, is to do both of those really quickly. If they come up with a number that's the same or very, very close, you've done something right. Uh, you can also use some of the other formulas there, right? You can go I squared. In this case, it would be times Z, the total impedance of the circuit. Or you could go E squared over Z, right, using the total source voltage squared divided by the impedance. 
So that's the power relationship that's going on here, right? Those are all our values, and that's great. The last thing I want to talk about uh, for this circuit is our power factor. Now, power factor is always watts divided by VA, or a horizontal divided by a hypotenuse. And we can do this at any stage. We could have done it with our impedance triangle, horizontal divided by hypotenuse. We just take that impedance triangle, multiply by I squared, gives us this, right? P or R times I squared gives us power. XL times I squared gives us Q, right? So that would work as well. You can use it there. You can also do it in the voltage triangle, right? Because it's all those values times current. We'll fill in your values here. In this case, we get a power factor of 0 0.483. And if we type into our calculator arc cos 0 0.483, it will tell us our power factor angle. So this is a power factor. Right, always between 0 and 1. In this case, we can get a power factor angle of 61 degrees, which is perfect, because if we were to do the trigonomic functions over here, we get 61 degrees. Now this angle, if you remember back, would match the angle in our voltage. And if you went back to our impedance triangle, it would also match that angle. So those relationships stick the entire way through. Uh, I hope that these videos helped you. Uh, work your way through a series resistive reactive circuit. Uh, our next set of videos is going to be a little step above and we're going to do a series RLC circuit. Uh, so watch that when you're ready to. Um, happy math.